Welcome everyone. Voting for Top Left 2022 is going on right now, so I thought, what better way to help it along than with a revisit to JM's infamous gas pressure video. You know, the one where he compared the sun to a big ball of fire and that it needed oxygen to burn? Yeah, that one. Anyway, I wanted to do a fresh take on it since I first covered it two and a half years ago. I have learned a lot since then, and I thought I could bring some fresh new comments to it. Plus, he is my nominee for Top Left 2022, and I really, really want him to win at something. Lord knows, he thinks he is outstanding in all his fields and is the master of everything under the oxygen-burning sun. So why not keep him front and center in everyone's mind by showing off his derp in all its glory? Hello, my friends. My name is Joshua Michael, and I'd like to welcome you to jamtruth.com. This is the Science 100 series. This class is Science 103 on gas pressure. And I've subtitled this class, Where Did the Universe Go? Wait, the universe went somewhere? Huh. I could be missing something here. Let's hear more. Because by the end of the class, I'm going to reveal to you that you don't live where you think you do. And that, cl that question, where did the universe go, is going to uh, be answered by the end of this class. Are you sure about that? So, I think you'll find this class particularly interesting because gas is a very unique state of matter and gas pressure is even more exclusive, which interestingly enough, kind of will change the paradigm of where we live once we pay attention to it. Wrong, 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 wrong. And realize it's got some very unique and very specific um, qualifying factors to it. I would highly recommend that you buckle in. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. It's actually buckle up, not buckle in. But I'm just being nitpicky. Because by the end of this course, that subtitle will be answered, folks. So let's get started. First, we are told by, sci by mainstream science that we live on a, a globe, that, th that there's an atmosphere, and on just beyond that atmosphere, there's a vacuum of space and stars and the sun and all this, all this. You are correct, sir, yes! So with the beginning of the scientific method, you must first start with a question. So here's the question. How do you have a gas pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure, without a container to begin with? What JM fails to realize is that gas pressure and air pressure are not the same thing. But we will get into that later. Folks, I think this is the basis of our understanding, the basis of this course and this class, and we need to really look at this question because we're going to really dive deep into this particular question. So let's bring the board on. So here's the question. How do you have a gas pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure, without a container to begin with. Folks, in order to start the process, we first need to define gas pressure. So let's start with the definition of gas pressure. The pressure of a gas is the force that gas exerts on the walls of its container. Okay, that's from chemistryelmhurst.edu. Let's read that again. The, the pressure of a gas is the force that gas exerts on the walls of its container. I noticed that he doesn't define the word container. Here is the definition of container. An object that can be used to hold or transport something. Hmm, I wonder why he didn't define the word. Could it be that container is not specific and can be anything that is on this list? It can be open on top, have a removable or hinged top on it, or be completely sealed. So, since he is teaching science, one would think that he would want those he is teaching to be able to fully understand what he is talking about. 
but he really doesn't know what he is talking about since he is just reading definitions from his search results on Google while wearing a butcher's smock and littering the ground with paper. Next page. To have a gas pressure, it must have a container to begin with. It must be contained within walls in a sealed container. Folks, that's the very definition of gas pressure. According to the definition he brought up for gas pressure, it just says container. It makes no mention of sealed, though it can be implied. But container itself is very vague as I have already shown. You can't have a gas pressure without a container, okay? Okay, let's look at Boyle's Law. Kinetic molecular theory explanation of Boyle's Law. Observations about pressure may be explained using the following ideas. The rapid motion of, and collision of molecules within the walls of the container causes, in caps, pressure. Force on a unit area. Pressure is proportional to the number of molecular collisions and the force of the collisions in the particular area. The more collisions of gas molecules with the walls, what walls? The walls of the container, the higher the pressure, okay? And that's from chemistryelmhurst.edu as well. Bear with me for a minute, folks. Let's look at this. If I remove either of these conditions, either the collision of molecules or the walls of the container, do I have a gas pressure? No! For what he is getting at with gas pressure, he is right. But no matter how he tries to define it, gas pressure is not air pressure. Pressure is proportional to the number of molecular collisions and the force of those collisions in the particular area. Okay? Without the walls of a container, there can be no pressure. It's like having an atmosphere and a vacuum in the same place. What the hell did you just say? It's an oxymoron, folks. You, you can't have it. Anyway, let's look at another definition. A gas is a sample of matter that conforms to the shape of its container in which it is held and acquires a uniform density inside the container, meaning it equalizes, folks. Even in the presence of gravity and regardless of the amount of substance in the container, so regardless of whether you believe gravity or not, you still must have a container, okay? It doesn't matter. If not confined to a container, gaseous matter, known as vapor, will disperse into space. Let's read that again. If not confined to a container, gaseous matter, known as vapor, will disperse into space. I want you all to take note of the fact that J.M. put in parentheses, even if a fairy tale gravity existed. Fairy tale as two words and spelled T-A-I-L, not T-A-L-E, behind gravity. He is inserting his opinion into this citation. Thus, he has gone from teaching to indoctrinating. But I digress. Every day, around 90 tons of Earth's atmosphere does disperse into space, which at that rate will take 150 billion years for Earth's entire atmosphere to completely disperse into space. Folks, it's called increasing entropy. It's called the entropic force. It's the second law of thermodynamics. Is it me, or does anyone else hear him say second law of thermodynamics? The term gas is also used in reference to the state or condition of matter having this property. Let's look at another one. The atoms and molecules in gases are much more spread out than in solids or liquids, meaning they vibrate and move hot freely and at high speeds. No, it says they vibrate and move freely at high speeds, not meaning they move freely and at high speeds. A gas will fill any container, but if the container is not sealed, the gas will escape. That's from sciencelearn.org. So, if the container is not sealed, the gas will escape. Okay, 
Well, since Earth loses 90 tons of atmosphere into space every day, it's a container. JM just confirmed it. Bravo, JM. Bravo. This is pretty cut and dry, folks. I mean, I mean, I can't make this any easier. I don't know how else to, to explain this. Okay? It's, it's pretty, it's pretty blatant. Okay, let's look at another one. Gases behave differently from the other two commonly states of matter, solids and liquids. So we have different methods of treating and understanding how gases behave under certain conditions. Under certain conditions. Gases, unlike, big word there, solids or liquids, have neither fixed volume or shape. They are entirely, they are molded entirely by the container in which they are held. And that's from the University of North Carolina. Can anyone see where I'm going with this? Anyone? 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 The Great Depression passed the... Anyone? Anyone? Going once? Going twice? No? 45, 45, don't number, don't fit. on at 45, don't number, don't fit. Sold 45, sold them 45. Well, let's move on. So this is from our friends at NASA, folks. The molecules are in constant random motion and frequently collide with each other and the walls of the container because molecules are in motion and the and gas will expand to fill the container since density is defined to be the mass divided by volume density depends directly on the size of the container in which the fixed mass of gas is confined and that's from our good friends at nasa of course someone's going to say but josh you don't believe what nasa says Technically, that's true. Most of what NASA presents us, I have found to be pseudoscience and not correct. However, in this particular instance, according to what they put out as far as gas and gas pressure is concerned, they are correct in regards to what genuine science has already established. Okay, let's look at, another, at the last definition. This is from schooltutoring.com. It's a website for uh, special ed children or children with special needs. Um, so let's look at that. This is on gas. It has no shape or size of its own. It takes the shape of its container and occupies the space given to it. And that's from schooltutoring.com. Okay, so I've just given you seven different scientific citations. All seven of which specifically mention a container. In fact, the word container appears 14 times within those seven citations. But what does that have to do with me? I don't know. It's probably just a coincidence. In fact, the word container probably isn't even all that important. Uh, we probably can just throw it out, right? Folks, gas pressure is specifically defined by the container and the walls in which it's held. Now, I didn't actually uh, see this until Quantum Eraser on YouTube pointed it out. And then I, I, I don't know whether it's just she opened my eyes to it or what, but now I see it everywhere. Of course, because Quantum Eraser's favorite word is container. Now I understand. He was your Papa Flurf before you found Nathan Thompson. And everybody is yelling gas pressure gradient in an attempt to explain away the needing of a barrier between Earth's atmosphere and space. Okay. Yes, those who deny that the Earth is an oblate spheroid with its atmosphere attached to it by gravity. They can't comprehend that, so they use anything, including the Bible, to disprove it. So this is the problem when people use a term out of context and try to use it to explain something they really don't understand. So people are yelling, gas pressure gradient, gas pressure gradient. Gas pressure gradients do exist, but the Earth's atmosphere is atmospheric or air pressure, not gas pressure. Thus, because of, damn it, oh, I can't recall. Darn it. Hey, Desert File, can you help me out here, please? Gravity! Thank you.
because of gravity, the atmosphere is a pressure gradient that has fewer and fewer gases in it the higher up you go. In fact, one of those gases has been found past the moon. Okay, so let's see here. Answer this question, what comes first? Gas pressure or gas pressure gradient? Isn't JM the one doing the teaching? I mean, it's not like he can hear us over the internet anyway. First, answer this question. How do you have a gas pressure? Also known as atmospheric pressure, without a container to begin with. Already asked and answered. Folks, before we talk about gradients, okay? Because there's all kinds of gradients. But before we talk about gradients, define gas pressure. From the Elmhurst EDU website, gas pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is a force exerted by the substance per unit area on another substance. When you blow air into a balloon, the balloon expands because the pressure of air molecules is greater on the inside of the balloon than on the outside. Pressure is a property which determines the direction in which mass flows. If the balloon is released, the air moves from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. Okay. Not pressure, not water pressure, gas pressure. Well, duh. Okay. Because you can't compare water pressure to gas pressure. That's called a false equivalency fallacy. What does that mean? It means you're using two separate states of matter or two completely separate things to try to compare um, one to another. It'd be like, like comparing cows and apples. You know, it, it makes no sense. Okay, let's look at why for a minute, okay? Why? So the question is why. I am so sorry to all headphone wearing viewers. JM apparently isn't the master at volume control in his editor. Whew, that was loud. Even though liquids, like water, and gases are arbitrarily classified as fluids, liquids are not gases. Okay, and number two, water pressure still requires a container. Look at oceans, folks. Okay, you have the bottom and you have the walls and the, it contains the, the oceans in. There's no, there's no, um, there's no ceiling. The difference is water does not have to be in a sealed container and there's a reason for that. Yes, it's called gravity. I am sure he will tell us what he thinks it is, maybe. Okay, however, it does not have to be in a sealed container because water is made of H2O molecules that have intermolecular bonds, i.e. they do not move freely and at high speed. Oh my God, JM did it again. It says they do not move freely at high speeds, not they do not move freely and at high speeds. Now, gas, because they do not have intermolecular bonds and do move at high speeds. That's the difference. Let's look at this one more time, shall we? Because atoms and molecules in gases are much more spread out than in solids or liquids, they vibrate and move freely at high speeds. Gases will fill any container, but if the container is not sealed, the gases will escape, okay? And gases behave differently from the other two commonly studied states of matter, solids and liquids. So we have different methods of treating and understanding how gases behave under certain conditions. Gases, unlike solids and liquids, have neither fixed volume nor shape. They are molded entirely by the container in which they're held. Again, from our friends at the University of North Carolina. So here's the million dollar question, folks. How do we have a gas pressure, also known as atmospheric pressure here on Earth? if in fact we're on a spinning ball. One more time, Desert File. Gravity! Gravity! Thank you again, Desert File. Stop. In the name of love. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Let me ask that a different way. Where's the lid to the container in which we live? Now, I've got the answer for you. Some of you are not gonna like this, but that's okay. I never said you'd like it. I simply said it would be the truth. 
In other cosmologies around the world, we are told the Earth is flat and appears to have a dome over it, such as Egyptian, Norse, Hindu, Inca, Navajo, and even Hebrew. Okay? Not to mention that in scripture, we are told over 150 times what the cosmology of this earth is. In fact, in Job, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Enoch, uh, the list goes on and on, folks. A, not all ancient cultures claim the earth had a dome. B, not all flat earthers can agree on the cosmology of a flat earth. And C, the scriptures never stated what the shape of the earth is. If most flat earthers believe that the scriptures state the earth is flat, then they are no better than those who exploited the Bible to control what people think, do, and believe. In fact, in Job, we're told that he spread the stars like a canopy for us to dwell in. Okay? Since he separated the waters from the waters. Okay? In fact, in one place in Job, it says that it's a looking glass and that we look as grasshoppers to him and that it is his footstool for us, the Creator's footstool, okay? Now this actually makes sense when you look at gas pressure and realize we have to be in a container and that we can't live on a, on a, on a spinning ball. So, like Unirock, JM thinks opinions are fact. Yet we've decided to believe people who have said they have tested these things without any proof. Um, no, because science doesn't show proof. And people have tested things over and over and over again with the same or similar results. We've been shown CGI, computer graphics. We've been shown um, very bad cartoons, maps, or not maps, but drawings, paintings, and other things, but never an actual, any actual proof. JM is right. Flat Earthers have shown us all those things and more, with no evidence to back it up. Okay. Whoa! What the hell happened? Was there a solar eclipse all of a sudden? Oh, right! It's JM's I'm about to lay down some stupid filter. If you haven't already had face palm protection or a pillow at hand, I suggest you get some. It's okay. I'll wait. Okay, you ready? Here we go. So I don't know, is there other planetoid forms or other things that NASA's told us that are, that are gaseous, spherical places that we're told really exist? Like most of the planets, I guess, in our solar system? NASA is not the only source for the universe, but it's the Flat Earthers government agency of choice. And I would say not most of the planets in our solar system. But yes, Jupiter and the Sun are the two celestial bodies I can think of. I mean, a quick search on Google will tell you that. How are they even existing without a container? The simplest answer is the universe is the container. And since according to J.M. and his scriptures, the ones written only in ancient Hebrew, you know, the very first human language, God made the universe and everything in it. So he is really questioning why God made it the way he did. In fact, now that I think about it, the sun, we're told, is a big gaseous ball burning in, in space, in a vacuum. By the way, since we're on the subject of vacuum, fire, the element by which the sun exerts its energy, and I don't care if it's nuclear fission or what, it's still fire, okay? Needs what element, folks, in order to continue to burn? Oxygen. But wait, there's no oxygen in space. How is it burning? In fact, the sun has no container. And we've already dispelled gravity. So here's my hypothesis, which technically is all it can be because there's no way NASA or anyone else has ever studied the sun because there's no way to get close enough to it. It's false. Okay. But my hypothesis is it's not a ball of gas. It's also probably not 93 million miles away because light doesn't travel forever, folks. But I digress. We'll talk about light 
in a different class. In fact, now that I think about it, planets and stars, stars are allegedly other balls of gas, but I've just established they cannot burn in the vacuum of space. Since we're talking about vacuums, how do you have a vacuum that's not in a container? The brains of flat, nope, nope. That joke's way too easy. Forget I said it. Again, gas, the negative side of that, or the opposite side of that would also be negative gas or a vacuum, okay? Which also would need to be held in a container. If we go to a laboratory and look at a vacuum, we can only create a vacuum in a container. Yet we're told that on this earth, all this oxygen stays here on earth by gravity. But there is no gravity. And I've just shown you that you can't have a gas pressure without a container. Isn't it cute how he thinks he dispelled gravity? More like misspelled. Sorry, sorry, easy joke again. Equating gas pressure without a container with the Earth and its atmosphere is a tired old argument made out of ignorance that all flat earthers have used forever. So all the pseudoscience that we've been taught, folks, is a lie and is not true. Now I'm sorry if you're a, if you're a teacher or a professor or even an astrophysicist and you've been teaching this garbage. Unfortunately, this is what happens when you teach in a system that has a curriculum that you can't verify. It's called indoctrination. Now is that any way for Jam to speak about his fellow flat earthers? I mean, really? Anyway, the important thing to note here is that gas pressure must have a container in order to hold gaseous material. That having been said, I'd like to thank you for being here with me on jamtruth.com. I hope you've enjoyed this class. I know I've enjoyed sharing it with you. And I hope we can move forward into really discovering truth and what our world and what our this place that we live on called Earth really is. Because I think that there's more here than meets the eye, folks. If you like this video, please like it and share it on YouTube, Facebook, and other social media uh, platforms. Please feel free to have an open discussion about this. That having been said, that ends my class for today. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, I was wondering, do you think maybe we can uh, try to figure out what the sun really is, seeing as how now we know it's not a ball of gas? Stop debating Flat Earth. Flat Earth is not a debate, folks. Flat Earth is a science topic. And you don't debate science. Like, I mean, honestly, he, he is the, the personification of the top left of the Dunning-Kruger. Like, I can't think of anyone that fits the description of being, you know, on the left side of the Dunning-Kruger scale more than this guy. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say he's a, he's modified Dunning-Kruger, um, because I'm gonna say Mount Stupid has been shifted slightly left for him. <laughs> yeah. So it's even closer to no knowledge before you think you're an expert in everything.